Hello and welcome back to our study of Pinine Halacha, the teachings of Rebbe Yezra Malamed, as we continue with the laws of Pesach. And we're not actually into the laws yet, we're still talking about the essence of the holiday, perhaps the meaning of the holiday. We'll spend a little bit of time on that before we get into the so-called nitty-gritty, of which there is plenty. Uh, certainly we will not cover all of that in the few short times that we have up until the Chag. But in the next simon, Chag Cheres Gilui HaMusar, the Rav writes, Madu HaYetzorch Am Yisrael Lefneho Fa'aso Ka'am L'Hishtabet Ba'ofer Nara Kokach B'Mitzrayim. Simple question. Before the people become B'nai Yisrael, so to speak, before we are formed as a nation, why did we have to go through, this is my words, what the Torah calls the Iron Crucible, the Kur Habarza, why did they have to go through such terrible subjugation and slavery in Egypt? Ha'hazber ha'pashatu, the simple explanation is, b'bnei shi'udo shal am Yisrael l'saken es ha'olam b'china musarit. He says the simple explanation is that our job is to bring a certain level of morality to the world. And if we're going to be the representers of morality in the world, if we're going to bring this moral state to the world, then we have to know what it's like to be suffering. And more importantly, we have to know the ability of humans to inflict suffering on others. And even if we look at current events today, uh, certainly it's no exception, and perhaps that's why we have a greater chush, a greater sensitivity to what's going on in the world, and we certainly should, because everything that we talk about, always in the Torah, we're always reminded, remember that you were slaves in Egypt, you were slaves in Egypt, so we should be more sensitive to the plight of others. As I just mentioned, that many times when the Torah commands us regarding interpersonal commandments, the Torah will also remind us or mention our plight as we were in Egypt. Umehem. For instance, V'ger lo silchatz, v'atem idatem es nefesh hager, ki gerim heyisim be'eretz Mitzrayim. The Torah warns us on more than one occasion, on several occasions, about not giving trouble and not causing suffering to the proselyte, to the convert, and it says, and you should know the soul of the of the ger, of the proselyte. Why? Because you were strangers in a strange land in Egypt. As the Sukkim and Vayikra teach us, that a person has to also not oppress the stranger among you. You cannot take advantage, and you have to be treat him as if he was born among you, because remember, you were also once gerim, you were also once strangers in a different land, in the land of Egypt. Ani Hashem Elokeichem, I am Hashem, your God. V'chein Amru Chachamim, and the sages further teach us, Shilafnei Shehischel HaKadosh Baruch Hu L'Hakoses HaMetzrim, Chazal teaches us that before God began to punish the Egyptians, he instructed Moshe Rabbeinu to command the Jewish people about the mitzvah, the commandment of freeing slaves. This is based on the Yerushalmi and Rosh Hashanah, that before they even got their own freedom, they had to learn that maybe one day when they were free and they would have slaves of their own, servants of their own, they would never torture them, they would never cause them undue suffering. Quite the opposite, as we learn the story of the Eved Ivri, the beginning of Parashat Mishpatim, that after six years they would send the slaves free, and they would not only go free, but they would give them lots of gifts, so it's called Ha'anaka, many generous going away parting gifts, so to speak. He says then, as a matter of fact, something incredible, something that's wonderful happened in the story of the Exodus, 
שכל העמים שבעולם, בשעה שהם מצליחים לגבור על משאבדיהם. He says, if you look at history, all nations of the world, as soon as they're able to overthrow or overturn or overcome their tormentors, those who enslave them, what happens? Misgaim v'hovchim es atzmon l'mishabdeim l'adonaiyahem shel l'sha'avar. They merely switch positions, and they will then take their previous masters and turn them into their servants. They will then assume charge, and they will enslave those who had enslaved them. Ve'ilu Yisrael, however, when it comes to the Jewish nation, kam achar shahamitzrim hukul even after the Egyptians were completely destroyed, of course, as we know from the story of Pesach, lo nisu ligbar lahem l'shabdam, el arak l'tzeis l'cherus. The desire of the Jewish nation was just to go free. They didn't want to go back to Egypt. They didn't want to rule over them. They didn't want to lord over them. They just wanted to leave. They wanted to be free. And they wanted to be their own nation. And Rav Malamed writes, this is the first time that we see freedom in the world as this value of the right and proper moral behavior. First time that it was witnessed by Kol HaOlam Kulo. He says, therefore, one of the next names that we have for Pesach is the holiday of freedom. It was one of the ways that we look at holidays. Many holidays have different motifs, and we want to know which is the main motif. So look at how it's described in Tefillah, in Benjing, in Kiddush, and of course the one that we say is the time of our freedom. It's not a, an accident that the first of our Shalosh Regalim, the first of the festivals where everybody would go to Jerusalem for their pilgrimage, is Pesach, because this represents human freedom and also our responsibility to bring this moral value to the world. And maybe this is also why they counted the years. The Gemara Rosh Hashanah tells us that the kings would count their years. They would start counting from the month of Nisan. So that the notion of freedom is central when we talk about Israel ruling over themselves or having their own kingdom and their own municipalities, that when it comes to the kings, that cherus, but not just being free, but being free and knowing what it means to be morally free and not to subjugate others and to understand the plight of others. So much of Pesach has to do with not only our own freedom, but understanding what it means to treat others with dignity and respect and this is something certainly that the world needs to hear, and it is our job as a Jewish nation to make sure they indeed do so. So we thank you for listening. We'll see you, God willing, next time as we study the laws of the Panini Halacha from Rabbi Yezim Shlita. Thank you so much, and have a great day.